in the supply chain. So in this vein, I would like to take this opportunity to call on all the companies that are on this call and uh, to use word of mouth for those that are attending this call to spread it, that it would be a good idea for companies to consider becoming members of these organizations because they offer the chance for one voice and concerted action. Now, the program today should be about uh, an hour and a half. And during this time, we shall go through two main presentations. One that is giving some background and a bit more information about what we have taken into consideration to come to this stage where we're launching this today. And the second presentation is a complete run through from the beginning through to the end of the steps that you will need to take um, while registering to become a supplier or a vendor to Mopani. Thereafter, we have uh, a few minutes that we'll set aside for question and answer at the end. But I'd like to introduce uh, the people that I'm with here at Mopani on this call. I have um, Mrs. Wilma Nyondo, who is the Supply Process Improvement and Quality Assurance Manager. She will be giving us the presentation right after I speak. We also have here Ms. Sandy Pirichanda, who is our Business Development Superintendent under Corporate Affairs Department. I have also with me uh, Mr. Matengele Kaira, who is Manager Information Systems. So at this stage, that I'd like to introduce myself. My name is Lorraine Tembo. I'm the Manager Corporate Affairs. Now, before I hand over for the next presentation, I'd just like to make mention a few housekeeping rules. Um, if you notice, we muted everybody, but you still have the possibility to unmute yourself when you have a question. I would encourage that you can, during the presentation, you can make use of the chat box. And uh, if you have a question, already send it in. We'll be able to read them uh, from this end. Um, at the point when we have the question and answer session, for those that would like to ask, you can just use the icon for raising your hand. We will make observation of who that is and we will call you on to speak. So I, I'm looking forward to a very good session. Uh, unfortunately, we've not been able to do the live streaming on Facebook, but we are recording this and uh, we will put it on our Facebook page and all other media. So in case you are getting calls from others saying they've not been able to log in, let them tell them not to worry, they will still get this information. So at this point in time, I'd like to pass over to Mrs. Nyondo, who will take us through the vendor registration process presentation. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. I'm going to say, uh, I'll just take you through the presentation on our online registration process. But to begin with, I would just like to give a, a brief uh, background about Mopani. Mopani Copper Mines is a multifaceted mining investment operating in Kitwe and Muflira districts. Operations encompass full range of copper production chain, extracting ore underground, concentrating, smelting, refining, and packaging the finished red metal for export. You will get more details about Mopani Copper Mines from our website, which is mopani.com.zm. Mopani is currently using its manual registration process. Today, we are launching our online vendor registration process. And that's the reason we're having this training so that we are all uh, familiar with how the online vendor registration process will work. The objective of this online registration process is to simplify and significantly shorten the process to facilitate for more local company participation. We will provide you with the benefits and the constraints of the manual process. Our current manual process has got too much paperwork. This is costly for both the vendor and Mopani. It's got no visibility. There is potential loss of physical copies and it's time consuming. 
What are the benefits of the online registration process? It is cost effective because there is less paperwork. Everything will be done online. It is effective as there is no loss of information. It's efficient. It enhances transparency and easy tracking of registration status. I'll provide an overview of the online registration process. On that one, the first step is the external advert. In this, we have the registration for new suppliers, which will be open to the general public at announced intervals for a specific period of time. The advert will be posted detailing the categories for which registration has been opened for and the required documentation. There will be a link on the online portal that will be included in the advert and will also be available on the Mopani website. All submission of documents and questionnaires will be done online. As part of submission, the vendors will be required to indicate their categories of specialization. The next step will be security vetting. They will be due diligence that will be done on all the directors and shareholders of the vendor. This is important so that we just know all our clients that we will be onboarding in our system. There will be a feedback response that will be sent automatically for those that fail these security checks. Those that pass the security checks will go to the next level, which is the vendor registration committee review. Mopani Copper Mines has a vendor registration committee that reviews all applications, documentation submitted for completeness and compliance before approving for the next stage of registration. Depending on the category or speciality of the services being provided, the vendor registration committee may request for a virtual or physical inspection that will be done. The inspection team will be selected for that particular inspection and the vendor will be provided with the inspection results immediately and signed for physical inspections. Thereafter, the next step is the system registration. Successful vendors will be integrated into the system and the vendor will be activated. At this point, the vendors will automatically be informed via the system and the vendor code will be sent to the vendor. Notification with the vendor details will be sent to the registered email for the vendors for further complete and supplier portal registration. We have a set of mandatory documents that are required. So we are kindly requesting that all the vendors before they actually begin the registration process ensure that all the mandatory registration documents are valid and up to date because these will be required during their registration. We've got the certificate of incorporation. We've just opened to give an example of how a certificate of incorporation uh, actually looks. I hope you can all see it. We've got the certificate, certified articles of association. Again, we've just beamed so that uh, everybody can see what the certified articles of association look at. And we've got company profile. We haven't beamed anything on company profile because each vendor has got a different type of company profile. A profile will definitely just include all the details about what the vendor uh, sells or wants to sell to the mine for both goods and services, who are the directors and all the information about the uh, company. We've got the uh, PACRA printout. So again, we are just beaming an example of the PACRA printout. 
We've got the tax clearance certificate. That's uh, a tax clearance certificate. We've got NAPSA compliance certificate. Okay, again, being a public entity, all vendors are required to have the Zambia Public Procurement Authority uh, certificate. When you go to the ZPPA website, you will be able to register your company. And uh, one of the good uh, things that come out with registering with the Zambia Public Procurement Authority is that the vendors can actually also uh, get inquiries and business opportunities from the uh, all public uh, institutions of the Republic of Zambia. Of course, we equally need the letter from the bank confirming banking details, because once you have business with Mopani Copper Mines, you will be paid through the banking details that you provide. We equally need the national registration identity or passport for all directors. This will be required as we are doing the compliance, know your client checks. Now, depending on the type of business that uh, each vendor requires to do, there are also some mandatory documents. If the vendor wants to be involved in labor, higher labor jobs, it is important that the labor compliance certificate is equally presented at the time of registration. All engineering jobs will require Engineering Institute of Zambia certificates. All construction works will require National Council for Construction Certificate. All energy-related goods and services will require the Energy Regulation Board license. Vendor categories. As Mopani Copper Mines, we equally categorize our vendors. One of the categories is the citizen supplier. The citizen supplier is for individuals, bidders, or suppliers who are citizens of Zambia. This means that the shareholding has to be 100% by Zambians, whether it's an individual, it's a firm, or it's a company. The shareholding has to be 100%. Then we've got the next category, which is local supplier. This means a non-citizen bidder or supplier who is registered to undertake business activities in the Republic of Zambia. On this one, it simply means that the company that is registered in Zambia, but whose shareholding is not 100% Zambian. Then we've got the foreign suppliers. This is for non-citizen suppliers who are not registered to undertake business activities in the Republic in accordance with the relevant written laws. We equally have the youth-owned businesses these can either be a citizen, local, or foreign-owned company, as long as the shareholders have attained the age of 19 years, but are below the age of 35 years. We have the women-owned businesses. According to the Act, this is silent. However, from the spirit of the Act and how it defines a citizen bidder, it can be inferred that a woman-owned business in whose shareholding is 100% by women. It's equally important that now, as we are a public entity, cooperatives are equally encouraged to be registered. We have citizen-owned startup companies. As Mopani, we equally want to encourage uh, startup companies even as we forge ahead to encourage citizen registrations. So we've got citizen-owned micro, small, and medium enterprises. These are SMEs with less than five employees, but have the NAPSA registration. They should be employing between 11 to 50 persons. Majority shareholding are women, youth, differently abled. 100% Zambian citizen shareholding. We are really trying to encourage all women, youth, and differently abled to be part of our database. For company type, 
It may be a limited liability with 100% Zambian citizen shareholding. Years of registration can be between zero to three years with PACRA. Demonstration of company assets investments, total investments range between 80,000 quacha to 200,000 quacha. Motivation from Citizen Economic Empowerment Commission. This is an added advantage if a vendor comes with a motivation from CEEC, that is highly recommended. The same is motivation from the Zambia Development Agency. Any affiliation letter and letter of recommendation from member-driven organization supporting local business development. Entities demonstrating initiative enjoys ventures. Again, that is an ad added advantage. And obviously, by virtue of Mopani's operations being in Kitu and Muflira, we are equally encouraging those uh, vendors who are in these areas to come up and uh, register with Mopani. But this does not mean that the other vendors from other parts of Mopani will be left behind. Now, as we were preparing this presentation, we did prepare some few questions and answers which we felt would be interesting and will be common to most of our participants. One of them is how long does the registration process take? Our registration process takes approximately a month. But again, this is highly dependent on how fast the vendor completes the questionnaire and submits all required documents. If a vendor is able to sub, uh, sub, submit all the required uh, documents, I believe our registration process, especially that we are going online, should be within a week. What happens to vendors that apply for registration earlier than the launch on the online system? We have a few vendors that already uh, applied to be included on the Mopani registration da database. So those vendors are using the manual system. So we will close the manual system by end of April. So my plea is all those vendors who already applied, please ensure that you fill in the questionnaires and submit all valid statutory mandatory documents so that we can conclude with the registration. What security checks are made on vendors? Basically, the security checks that are done is proven fraud, corrupt activities. Elaborate on what is covered in the inspection process. Basically, during the inspection process, we just want to verify some of the details that were provided by the suppliers in the questionnaires. So, for example, if you would have stated that you do machining works, we just want to inspect your workshop to ensure that you're able to actually perform the machining services that you had indicated. Why does a vendor need to register with Zambia Public Procurement Authority? Uh, as being a public entity, it is important that uh, you register with Zambia Public Procurement Authority, which is the authority for procurements for all public institutions. And then vendors are encouraged to register on the electronic government procurement system for opportunities in public procurement. How many years in registration should a company have for it to be classified as a startup? It's zero to three years. Why is the categorization of specialization of vendors a requirement? This is important because it assists our buyers in sending inquiries, tenders to vendors in their area of spe specialization. What offices are represented in the vendor registration committee? We've got representation from engineering, supply, business development, security, and legal. How often does the vendor registration committee sit for their meetings? The vendor registration committee sits once a week and when required. How much does MCM charge for the registration? There is no registration fee for our 
registration process. So if anyone asks for any money, please inform Mopani security. This is where our presentation ends. With that, I'll hand over to Madam Lorraine Temble. Right. Thank you very much for that uh, elaborate presentation, Mrs. Nyondo. Um, I'd just like to urge the participants. I've, I've sent through a message saying, please, if you have any questions and have need for clarity, do not hesitate to type out your question for the moment and type it out in such a way that it's going to everybody so we can follow in a systematic way. At this moment, I'd like to invite uh, Mr. Matengele Kaira to run us through the video that sets out the guidance from the beginning right through to the end of the vendor registration process. Mr. Matengere Kaira, please. Good morning. Uh, at this stage, we'll just switch to a short training video, after which we'll take a few questions in the Q&A. Welcome to the Mopani Copper Mines Vendor Registration Portal Training. To get started, key in portal.mopani.com.za in your browser. This should take you to the landing page. Once on this landing page, click on the registration link in the top menu. This should redirect you to a login page. Once on this login page, seeing as you're a new user, you will need to register for an account by clicking on the register as new user link. This will take you to the new user registration page. Once on this page, you can create an account by entering the email address that you wish to be registered with and creating a password that you, you will use with this system going forward. Once you have keyed in all the necessary details, you can click the register button. Once that is done, you will see a message indicating that an email has been sent to your account and you need to click that email to confirm your account. Once logged into your email, you should find an email like the one presented here before you. You can complete the registration process by clicking on the clicking here link. Once that is done, you will see a message telling you that you have successfully confirmed your email, after which you can continue the registration process by clicking on the login menu icon. Once on the login page, you can log in with the email address that you just registered with and the password that you just created. Once logged in, you will be presented with a consent for data processing prompt, which you must agree to in order for you to continue with the registration process. The first screen that you need to populate is the general information screen where you will enter your company name, who you are trading as, and if you are a subsidiary of another company, you can check the is subsidiary checkbox and indicate the subsidiary name. You can also enter the company registration number, the VAT registration number the taxpayer's identification number, the ZPPA number for Zambian companies, the workers' compensation number, the NCC number, and you can select your business workforce size, your supplier class, and your geographical area. You can also indicate what supplier type you are, whether an OEM, OEM agent, 
After that, you can click on the Save button to proceed to the next screen. You will notice that the General Information Continued tab now has a blue checkbox. That is the indication of the current tab that is required for you to proceed. So you can now click on the General Information Continued tab, select what percent shares the Zambian owned, select what percent shares in the company are woman owned, and you can select the company locality as well as the currency. Additionally, you will be required to also enter the contact name, the email address of this contact, and the telephone number. You can also enter the website address of the company and you can choose a remittance method after this you can proceed and click save once again this should now lead you to the shareholder details tab where you can enter the names of the shareholders the nationality of the shareholder and you can select a headshot which is an optional image if the shareholder is a public officer you can check the public officer checkbox and indicate the government body and the government position if not, you can simply leave this checkbox unchecked. Next, you can add this shareholder to the list. And if there is more than one shareholder for this organization, you can repeat this process until you have all the shareholders captured. You can then click Save, which should then lead you to the Conflict of Interest Declaration tab. On this page, if you have any Mopani employee, that may represent a conflict of interest for you due to a close personal relationship, you can indicate the details here. If there is no conflict of interest, you can skip this stage by simply clicking on save, and that should push you to the company address details stage. On this screen, you can select the type of address, the building, the street, the country, the province, and the city. You will also be required to enter the postal code, after which you can add this address to the list and click Save. Next is the director details. You can then enter the names of any company directors, what percentage shares they have, if any at all, the phone numbers of these directors, the NRC number, or optionally a passport number, the physical address, and you can select the country, nationality, country of nationality rather, of the director. If this director is a public officer, you can check the public officer checkbox, indicate the government body and the government role. If not, you can leave this unchecked. Next, you'll be required to select a passport or upload the passport or NRC copy for each director. The allowable formats here are PDFs and JPEG images only. Once this is done, you can proceed to add this director to the list by clicking the Add to List button. You can then click on the Save button to move to the next stage. 
Next, on the other contact information details, you specify whether this is a main contact, a technical contact, or an accounts contact. You can enter the full names of this contact. The position of this contact. line of this contact and the physical address. You can then proceed to save and this should take you to the banking details section. You can then select the type of account, bank name, bank code, the bank branch, the branch code, the account number, item number. and the method of communication. If you select email, then you are required to key in an email address. And finally, phone number. Additionally, you will also be required to select the currency of this account and the country in which this account is held. You can then proceed by adding to list and then clicking the save button. This will lead you to the attachment section of the process. On this screen, you will be presented with a list of documents that you are required to upload. You will select on the drop down which document you are uploading and you will choose an appropriate file to upload. Once you add to list, the attachment type that was selected will be checked off the list and you will proceed to the next file. Once you have selected all the attachment types, you'll notice they will all be ticked and you'll be able to see the uploaded documents when you scroll down. At this stage, you can click save and this should take you to the final stage. But before you proceed, you'll be required to categorize by stating which products you deal in. So if you click to categorize, You will then be taken to the Mopani Supplier Catalog System where you can select the goods that you deal in. Click Add. And you can also select the services that you deal in. And equally, click Add. Once you have selected your goods and services in order of priority, you can click save and finalize your categorization. This should take you back to the vendor registration system, at which stage you will now be given the option to submit your registration and complete the process. Once you submit, 
you receive some emails confirming that you have completed the process and these emails will look as follows. The emails that you should receive will look as follows. One email showing the goods and services that you have selected as the items you deal in and the other email will simply confirm that your registration has been successfully submitted and you can expect it to be processed within three weeks from the date of submission. Thank you for joining me on this short tutorial and wishing you all the best. Okay, so that was the uh, short uh, training video on uh, how to go about uh, using the online vendor registration portal. For those that might be wondering how to get onto this portal, I'll just show you um, a short presentation now of how you can get onto that page. Okay, so from the Mopani website, which is on uh, mopani.com.zm, you've got a section here that says uh, commercial. And uh, from this commercial section, you can then click on online vendor registration. And this should take you to the portal where you can actually carry out um, your vendor registration uh, once the process has been uh, opened for the public. I think now I can hand over to Lorraine um, for the questions that have been coming through online. All right, thank you. Thank you, Matengele. Thank you to everybody that's been very uh, uh, participatory. Someone says no sound, please. Can, can you hear me? Is my sound okay? Just checking. Just checking. Okay, thank you. Perfect. I think we can we can we can definitely move on. So um we've noticed we've noticed a number of questions that have already come in. So we'll start from there. Um still with my colleagues, uh we'll just run through some of the questions that have already been uh, been asked. One of the first ones is could you please go through the documents required once more. Can I kindly ask uh, Matengele, um, could you please share again the screen yeah. from the PowerPoint presentation, okay. which just shows the list of documents that we require for registration. And uh, Wuma would just run us through that again. Okay, I'm casting those uh, just now in a minute. I think slide five. Okay. So we've got the certificate of incorporation. Certified articles of association. Company profile. Parkra printout. Tax clearance certificate. NAPSA compliance certificate. Workers' Compensation Compliance Certificate. Zambia Public Procurement Authority Supplier Registration Certificate. Letter from the bank confirming the banking details and they shouldn't be older than six months. And 
the IDs for the directors. Those are the mandatories if you are not specialized. But under specialized, if you are looking for labor hire business, you need the labor compliance certificate. If you want engineering goods and services, Engineering Institute of Zambia certificate. If you're interested in construction works, National Council for Construction certificate. Any energy related goods and services, energy regulation board license. These are the mandatory documents, thank you. And just in addition to that, for the PACRA printout, we would appreciate to receive a PACRA printout that is printed from within the last six months. The insistence for this is because we are aware that directorship um, for, for a company can change at different occasions, and we would like to be, um, to be provided with the most late, latest information. So please take note of that. So um, moving on, um, there's a question on when does the online vendor registration begin? So the online vendor registration will start officially from the 1st of May, 2023. Uh, we'd just like to urge everybody to look out in the papers uh, in the weeks uh, leading up to the 1st of May because we may be specific in the areas where we would like to onboard new vendors. So please just pay attention to the national media because that's where we will uh, advertise. You obviously see the notifications on our website and all the social media pages. Moving on, is it mandatory to have a company website? The simple answer to that is that no, it's not mandatory to have a website. But I'll tell you, it's very attractive when a company has a website and as we're doing our due diligence to onboard you, we can simply just click and see all the products and services and all the other things that you're able to offer us. So for marketing purposes, I would say it's, 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 it's a nice thing to do to have a, a company website, but it is not a mandatory element for registration. There's a question on, can the company register for more than one category? Wilma. Yes, yeah, a company can register for more than one category. So when you're doing your categorization, just list all your specialities, but begin with where you are more strong. And then probably you go down to your weakest points. All right, moving on, we're seeing more questions coming in. Thank you very much for sending through those questions. Um, can a local company register a USD bank account or any foreign bank account? Wilma, and as you are answering that, could you also answer, can one decide to register more than one company? Thank you, Lauren. So in the registration process, you actually note that there is a field for currency that is permissible and then a person can register more than one companies, but obviously all the details need to be indicated. Thank you. The number of questions regarding the size, how much data we can accommodate, because reference is being made to the articles of association being a very, very big document. Uh, the question, do you need to scan the whole copy and attach it? The simple answer to this is yes, by all means, please do endeavor to have this in soft copy. As mentioned in the video, we prefer PDF because that's the format that we would like to see the documents in. Moving on, can a company which has no VAT but is on turnover tax, tax register with Mopani? Yes, they can. Thank you. 
other questions coming in um is the physical registration still ongoing The question is, is the physical registration still ongoing? Yes, that manual registration is ongoing. But remember, as per the presentation, this is ending end April. So every person who's sending through registration through the manual system has to ensure they conclude by the 30th of April, because thereafter you will be required to comments on the online platform. Okay, thank you. Uh, there's a question from Humphrey Kabwe who's saying, is there any need for already registered companies to go through the online registration process? The simple answer to that is no. This online vendor registration process is targeted towards new companies that we will onboard from here on. So those that are already on our database, please do not feel the need to go and re-register yourselves. But I'd like to urge that there is regular communication coming out of our supply department from Mopani overall as a company requesting you to update your documents or these uh, statutory documents. So um, I'd just like to urge everybody to regularly check their emails, check the emails that are coming in from Mopani so that you are up to date with um, what is going on from the supplier point of view. Uh, we'll go on for another five to, to 10 minutes as we're taking on more questions. Again, I see a lot of questions relating to the documents required, relating to um, what detail they should be submitting. I'd just like to say at this point, for those that joined in late, um, please do not worry. We will post this uh, training um, because it's being recorded. We'll post it up on our, uh, on our various media. It will also still remain available through our website and uh, the portal link that uh, is part of uh, the advert that came out in the national media. So do not feel left out. This training video that you saw in the last few minutes is, is going to be made available. And it's really very, um, very detailed and very guiding. So it's a step-by-step -step guide that would not leave anyone behind. Wilma, there's a question. How often will the vendor registration be open? Is it annual? It's coming from Mikubi. Okay, that will depend on our requirements. So if we see that on our database, we don't have many women, we probably would open it up a number of times so that uh, we ensure that we capture even the type of vendors that we want on our database. So right now it's not cast in concrete, it will depend on the need. Okay. Thank you. A question from Jocelyn Kumbe says, regarding EIZ certificates, is it the company requiring registration or director slash employee? It's the company requiring registration, but obviously it will be important that even the employees have, because once it comes to tender stage, some of those may be requirements. Okay. I want to give a chance for a few more questions to come in because some of them are repetitive um, and we have tackled most of them. There's a question from Joseph Mwamba, which says, will the online system support all operating systems such as iOS? Matenge. Yes, you can access the online platform um, in different types of uh, systems as mobile, and, and desktop, so you'll be able to access it on your Mac, on your Windows PC, and even those of you using Linux, yes, you'll be able to access the system. All right, thank you very much. I see a number of questions that are relating to the documents required, and once again, it could be that uh, the colleagues asking joined us a bit late. So the documents required will be in the presentation that we will also post up, the one that was made by Mrs. Nyondo. The video, the training video is also available 
on our website and it will give you a step-by-step -step guide. I see some questions regarding whether the documents are really needed. Um, I'd like to urge everybody to appraise themselves with what these documents are and to make things easy for us from our end, we would like to urge everybody to be up to date with all statutory documents. And I think for any business, it is good practice to ensure that you have all the relevant documentation in place and ready because that's the easiest way to break into a market. It's the easiest way to break into any place where you really want to do business legitimately. So please familiarize with these documents and endeavor to ensure that everything is in place. Someone asked the question, we do not have articles of association. I do not believe that a company does not have articles of associations as long as you're registered with PAPRA. This is one of the required documents. So please appraise yourselves with what documents you need to have in place to operate as a legal entity in the business environment here in Zambia. Okay, so thanks for those that are sending in the, the, the last minute questions. Um, there's a question from Courtney. How do we check if we are already a registered supplier as we received no communication when we applied? I'll let Wilma answer that. Okay, so for those vendors with such cases, kindly send through an email to our vendor relations officer, and then we'll be able to provide you with feedback. Thank you. Fidelis says the physical address inspection seems to favor big, well established companies. Is it not fair to base registration purely on statutory documents submitted? So if you noticed in our presentation, there is actually uh, a part where we talked about SMEs. So you can be considered under SMEs if you are not a big company. A question from Dittonix Enterprises. They say, can a sole trader apply for registration? Yes. Okay. Dittonix, I hope that uh, you've heard that, yes, indeed, a sole trader can apply for registration. What's most important for us is that you are operating as a legal, legally recognized entity. So the format in which you are legally recognized is important. That's why you notice from uh, Wilma's presentation, she also said that cooperatives can be registered on our database. So it's the legal existence of your entity that is very, very important for us because we are then able to conduct a due diligence on you. We want to protect our reputation as Mopani because we only want to deal with companies that are also operating legally. Further on, in the next uh, five minutes, as we are heading towards the conclusion at 11.30, so please, if you are burning with a question, now is a good time because we will be ending this uh, live stream. We will be ending this live stream in at 11.30, so please, anyone with a, a burning question, now is a good time. Joseph Mwamba says, will potential, will potential tenders for contracts works be listed on the ZPPA platform and will that require participation fee as most ZPPA tenders uh, uh, are required? Simple answer to that is no. Our, once you are registered on our database, we use our procurement system to alert you and inform you of any opportunities they are to for you to tender works so no they will not be advertised on zppa platform there's a question from kayombo regarding what is the minimal capital requirement uh, required to register with mopani um to that we do not have any minimum capital set just uh, my encouragement to you is as a company just be clear on what sort of business you want to do, be clear on what sort of investment you, you want to make, 
And at the point that you're registering with us, the only reason why we look at the, your level of turnover is for us to be able to classify you appropriately. Mark Mpanza, the question you asked on when the vendor for online registration is starting, uh, it was already answered. Please, it will start on the 1st of May, 2023. So there are other questions. I think it caused a bit of apprehension on whether a website is needed for a company or social media. Uh, we would like you to operate as professionally as possible, but like we said, it is not mandatory for you to have a website. Mary Muwamba says, advise the email address for us to inquire uh, if our companies are registered. Okay, I will answer this and I'll be very slow. So for all those that have applied to register at Mopani, there is a standard email address that corresponds with you in request for document submission. So do not attempt to write to anyone else other than replying to that email because that's the best channel that you can use. So it is mopani.registration at mopani.com.zm. That email, for those that have already put in application, you have received some correspondence from that email. Please, for any further queries, do make replies or write to that email there is a dedicated vendor re relations officer who will respond to you. Similarly, there is a phone number that you can get in touch, uh, in touch with and uh, with, or with or the vendor relations officer. So please um, try as much as possible to channel your communication through there. Right. I did say that we'll be bringing this meeting to a close at 11.30. And um, coming this close a minute away to 11.30, I'd just like to thank everybody that joined this meeting uh, from the response and from a few phone calls that we have received. We will consider repeating this uh, orientation for others that did not manage to log in, but that will be communicated appropriately. I'd just like to urge the ones that did join, uh, please spread the word about the launch of the Mopani's online vendor registration process. I'd also like to um, appeal to the ones on this call today that in the presentation made earlier, we did state that there is no payment required for vendor registration at Mopani. I emphasize this in bold because of the misinformation that goes out there. So please, I'd like you to be our ambassadors in ensuring that the information is correctly provided. And please let no one feel the urge not let no one feel the urge to pay anybody because the, the 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 online registration process is pretty clear and uh, straightforward okay and so um i'm being uh, reminded by my colleagues here that's why so for those that uh may encounter anybody requesting for a payment we would like for them to come forward to us and tip or tip us off anonymously there is a, a, a phone number that you can call toll free the number is one two three four five when you call to that number you can choose to remain anonymous someone is always ready to answer that, that phone, please do tip us off so that we are made aware of where these elements are that are requesting for payments. So with this said, I would love to thank everybody once more. Thank you very much for joining. And uh, we do look forward to either hearing from you on other matters. We hope that this will make things a lot easier. So thank you very, very much. Goodbye.